All right, what's your welcome back. Now this is going to be part 21 of Project Bash Plate. I'm going to get this thing finished. We've started the Bandit now. The Bandit O Doom is there with all its ass ripped out. Um, mm. Ready to put the small swing arm back in and dum de dum That project's going to be part two very soon. Now this is, what is it, Friday night, 7.30. Just got home from work. We've got a long day tomorrow at work and a late finish at 8 o'clock and then only Sunday to play. So um, we're going to play on Sunday as well. Just want to get down to West Bay for a little ride. And in the meantime, I want to get um, the bash plate finished purely because Penny's now got the scrambler and we're going to the Ace Caf Triumph meet on the following Sunday. So this bash plate needs to be finished and fit to the bike. So the next two videos are going to be bash plate. The first one is going to be showing you just now what on earth happened. Now, um, as you can see by the finish on this, remember when we put all this on on the back, I laid the sockets and weights on to press that down so that it bonded in, and that is absolutely bonded in forever. But what it did at the same time. You can see in the light. Turn it this way. That's it. The okay. towel, the nice, soft, comfy towel that I laid it on, has marked all the paint. <laughs> so this paint, obviously, this paint is just shit. It is obviously some sort. I got this paint. Listen to it. You got I it got from this a... stuff from an, a surplus store. Um, That's it. There it is, matte black for a pound of tin. And it's been fine in the past, but it's been on the shelf for about a year. So I'm wondering whether the fact that it's old now, it just ain't dried properly. And because of that, it's got to come off anyway. So to that end, there's no point in worrying about making this into a nice finish. All the time taken to get that lovely and flat like that, <laughs> it's now got this nice wrinkle finish. If it was uniform, do you know what? If oh, it was uniform, it. I'd have just whacked it on there. But as it is, what I'm going to do is key it up with a little bit of 320 grit, and then gonna put the frost wrap straight over the top. I'm gonna to mask out this uh, mesh, obviously, so that we don't get any on that, and then that'll be it. So it's gonna be six coats tonight. First thing, I'm gonna do it dry as well, because I don't wanna get water in all the little joints. Uh, and all this is, is a scuffer. That's it, all it is. Just with a, a flat board, just gonna scuff that up, take the tops off everything, even blocking up, it's so soft. It's unbelievable, there's obviously been some chemical degrading in this paint, and that is the way it goes sometimes. I've let this dry probably for a total of about two and a half, three weeks. And still it isn't properly hard. You can still leave fingernail marks in it now, so it's never obviously going to dry. So rather than worrying about that, just wrap it. Just gonna wrap it, baby. Just a proof that this paint isn't working. It's not even dusting. What it's doing is turning into little curly bits of like shavings. So this is almost like a, a, a wrap in its own right. It's rubbing off like a plastic. So there's clearly something cocked up with that paint, which is a shame. But we'll get it nice and flat and we'll wrap it. Right. As you can see, it's formed these little kind of Mm. Plasticky, you know, swirls rather than dust. Normal paint, when you sand it, you get dust. So it's definitely not gone hard by any means, it just will not cure. So that will do for now. Let's pop that down. This will just do the job, and once the, once the frost wraps on it, it can live on like that for however long, and we'll come up with a better solution in the future. Perhaps we'll get it powder coated in the future. As many people have already said, there we go. <laughs> oh well. Clean. Right, give this a degrease now and we can get it masked up, ready for paintage. Right, just going to mask off on the mesh. Great thing with this vinyl wrap is you just, if you do it on lights, you just tear it off. So, all I'm going to do on this is do it right up to the edge, tuck the edges underneath, and I can just rip it off when it's done. Just need to cover the bulk of this because you can pick out the, the wrap itself once it's in there. If it gets in there, as long as it doesn't get in the mesh. Right. The old frost wrap of doom turned up. Eventually, we got the cans in the post. <laughs> it's the right colour. <laughs> yeah. The 
whatever colour it is, it's going on there, believe me. Even if it's tennis ball yellow. Right, it is black. Okay. Check it out, baby. Here we go. Um, all masked away, all cleaned. Right. First of all, as before, just a grip coat, which is literally a light amount of paint, just enough to get a little tacky surface on it. Not too much, and certainly not a coat. Don't cover it. It's almost like a guide coat. You're just spraying it on lightly. Just like that, that's it. Not too much, just breath it over. Okay, now the um, recommendation on this stuff is six wet coats. So that's just a grip coat or, or a tack coat just to hold it. So this is number one. As a guide, if you're interested, if you're doing this yourself, uh, with this stuff you do have to be a little bit closer to the job than you might be with regular paint. I don't know why, it just doesn't seem to lay out. I think it dries coming out of the nozzle. If it's too far away. So there's one wet coat. And what that means, you can see what it means, if you're going to do it yourself, it all looks wet. If there's any dry looking areas like that, you just keep going over them until the whole job looks to be the same wetness. There we go. And that's it. That's it. Clear the can. Always clear your can in between coats because if you don't, then it just bungs up the nozzle and you bog it up the can. Cup of tea. Cup of tea? Yeah. Two. Cup of tea. Number three. Number five. And finally. Number six. This really is the last coat, there isn't any more in the can after this. I'm just going to concentrate on this edge because this is where it's doing its job as a bash plate. So if there's a good thick layer on this edge that will give it some resilience that it needs. And it does, it always looks porridgey, so if you're going to do this yourself, remember the tiger we did, if you look, remember that project. It does look porridgey when it goes on. It doesn't float out like regular paint. But don't worry, give it overnight and it goes lovely when it's finished. It just stretches. I think as it dries, it shrinks like rubber, which is what it is effectively, or vinyl. That's it, we're dead. Right, six coats. Six wet coats. Now I'm going to give it about 10 or 15 minutes just to flash off until get the worst of the wet out of it. Then with the tweezers I'm just going to pick the masking tape out 
before that forms a skin that then rips into the job itself and hopefully that's a bit of a, a dodgy time trying to get that out hopefully it won't rip off the job itself because I'm doing it while it's still nice and wet come back in a minute right. Mm. <laughs> Operation! Operation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Child. Right, what it's doing, it will disturb a little bit of the of the wrap, but the wrap's still really wet and really really liquid and it will stretch in so that will it won't show. It won't show when it's dry. Most important thing is not to get any black on the mesh. That's it. So where it's just lifted that edge, that will stretch in afterwards. Right, another big one. Ooh, scary. Yeah, I know it is, isn't it? Just kind of take it inwards. I'm sure it would be all bad to leave this to dry mm. because it would, um, it would stick. you'd get a skin then and it would rip back off into the job. Yeah, I know. I mean all of this is purely experimental. If it comes out right, good. If it doesn't, well there's no loss. I'm not making another one. <laughs> I'm not making another one, I know that. Enough bash platage. Playing with a bandit now. Project bandit will be resumed shortly. Here we are. That's it, there lovely. She is. About a tool, eh? Tiny little Tiny bit little just mark. there, but it is rubber, it is this vinyl, it and that will just rub off, yeah. Once that dries, it will just rub off. I should put it through quality control anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, just, I'm sure you will. Right, let's just get this all clear. Right, going to leave that now. Drying times, you know, usual stuff. Um, that's going to have 48 hours, and then it's going to get slapped on the bike, and that's it. That is the end of Project Bash Plate as of the next video. I'm just going to give that time to flash off and dry completely before I do anything, because it's like, this is the time when you could trash a job. Just, oh, just move that. Down it goes, been there a few times. So there's a little fly in that there, but I'm quite sure that is not important enough to worry. It's right where it won't show. So that's been it, number 21. 21, 21 I think. Number 21, number 22 will be on the bike and that's it. That'll be the last one and we get stuck back into the bandit. I'm just waiting for the chain link to arrive. Once that arrives, I can get the chain connected and then we're good to go for the back end, get it off the blocks and I can roll it around and start on the front end. There we are. That was Project Bash Plate number 21. Take it easy. All right, Tay? See you for the final episode uh, a couple of days' time.